Shahnameh Stories The Seven Labors of Rostam Haft Khan Rostam The Battle with the White Dev Part 2 Having killed off the guardian dev's Rostam entered the white dev's lair He found a vile abyss but couldn't see the demon in the pitch black There Sword in hand, he paused in the cramped cave, unable to flee, and with no one to fight. He rubbed his eyes and searched, until in the gloom he saw a mountain that blotted all within. Not wanting to kill the dev while he was sleeping, Rostam roared at the giant demon who awakened and in his incensed stupor threw a stone and attacked the intruder the hero trembled and feared for his life yet charged at the div like a mighty elephant and cut off a foot and a leg the main demon fell upon the hero like an enraged lion and then like mountain upon a mountain the two wrestled tearing out each other's flesh until all the ground was puddled and soaked with their blood With a few exceptions the iconography of the seventh Han shows Rostam inside the white dev's cave in the final act of their fierce battle stabbing the supine demon The dev is almost always shown on his back either to the left or right side of the image with one or two severed limbs Rostam is on top of him as he thrusts his dagger into the dev's heart representations of previous and subsequent moments in the combat are rare but as we shall see the narrative of the seventh labor is both physically and psychologically far more complex as mentioned before manuscripts were meticulously planned The text was first written out by scribes who then left a space for the painting. In Persian manuscript painting, the moment that is illustrated is known as the break line verse, and in the majority of illustrations, the critical words appear in the line just above the painting. As such, the break line verse of the 7th Han is the moment when Rostam stabs the white dev and tears out his liver its presence and the general adherence to it suggests that on the whole the manuscripts painters read the verses at the top of the empty space left for illustration and then painted that moment while this is for the most part the thrust of the dagger into the demon's heart a small number of paintings deviate from this norm and illustrate the earlier stage of the battle where the white dev is still standing and charging at Rostam who then slices off his leg however the white dev can appear with a variety of severed limbs although the narrative specifies that Rostam first maimed the dev by cutting off a foot and a leg and there is always a lone severed leg or foot thrown floating hobbling or hopping about by itself the illustrations can range from including a chopped off hand to two legs or even none at all there can also be little correlation between the description and the painted action here even though the narrative of the would be break line describes the two tearing at each other's flesh the artist has chosen the familiar action of the stabbing the text continues at the bottom to note that Rostam loped off a foot and a leg but omits the verse describing the illustration in this painting the artist has followed the placement of the break line that describes Rostam slicing off the leg but gone further to communicate the demon's defiance and continued fighting by showing him holding up his severed limb as a weapon we know from the narrative that the white dev is huge in fact as large as a mountain 
that both in size and colour blots out the whole cave. We see in the standard illustrations of this scene that his enormous dimensions are somewhat masked by the fact that he's always lying on the ground and more or less underneath Rostam, whereas when they are both upright, artists could show the white deev's impressive height and width by having him tower over the hero. Here, as expected, the break line verse just above the painting describes Rostam's attack, the two falling upon and tearing at each other's flesh, and the slicing off of the demon's leg. However, regardless of the break line, the multitude of paintings suggest that artists drew on visual tradition, convention, or memory rather than the text in creating their compositions. Furthermore, the artist could reveal his personality by choosing to illustrate a different segment of a known story, thereby establishing a thematic variation for a popular episode. There are as many variations as there are similarities in this most illustrated of scenes, and in the case of the white div, there is often a striking resemblance between paintings depicting the same event. While none are exact copies and differ in creative embellishment, they signal the use of pounces, suggesting a probable execution in the same atelier or ketab khane, as the artist workshop was called. This subtle manipulation of the given types was one of the ways in which the artist could put his individual touch on the painting. In Persian miniature painting, a significant portion of a student's training came from copying master compositions through the method of pouncing, whereby a piece of thin, transparent vellum was laid over a painting. A fine needle was then used to pierce the vellum along the major outlines of the original composition underneath it. After the process of piercing was finished, the painting was replaced with blank paper and charcoal powder was dusted over the pierced vellum sheet. The charcoal passed through the holes and left a trace of the copied work on the blank paper, after which the painter proceeded with additional colouring and detailing. These vellum sheets would be retained by painters as precious records of successful compositions. Common motifs were easily shared and disseminated by means of stencils, pounces, and paper models that circulated among the various artists inside the workshop. These elements are in full view in these four paintings of the same period. With the same composition, the three on the right have the tree with Ula tied to it, Rach bending down to drink from the oxidized river, and almost exactly the same white div and Rostam. Yet each artist has added his personal touch. The far right has added a div in the gold tree, as the two center that have used the most gold differ in the shape of the trees and the cave itself. The far left has reversed the pounce to place the div to the left rather than the customary right. The most unusual is the white div who has colored horns which give him a playful air that is accentuated by the stretch of his intact leg as he leans back calmly with a seemingly amused smile playing on his thin bright red lips. In the three to the right, the artists have gone beyond the text and added a severed glove-like hand that lies lifeless as the cut-off foot troops off on its own. In both of these illustrations, the white tree to which Oulard is tied breaks out of the top frame, the left in circular puffs of gold and the right in a flight of leaves that explode like a shower of golden stars. On the left, the scalloped edges of the pitch-black cave 
are formed by pale green moss-like undergrowth dotted with glistening blue and red flowers that web out in starfish patterns inside darker patches that give the illusion of moistness and depth and are replicated beneath the grazing rache in the painting on the right. The blue of his saddle cloth matches the white deaf's tunic and is picked up by the deaf's horns and Rostam's plume. In both, the position of the deaf's raised left leg with the poofy, elegant, one blue and one burgundy tunic give the impression that he has just fallen and the thud can be felt and almost heard as he lands heavily on his left buttock. Under Rostam, blood gushes from the stump of the chopped-off leg while its detached blood-spurting foot marches on, unaware that it is missing its better half. Successful models brought a range of activity and expression that despite their similarities, nevertheless contain unique moments of pictorial performance. Here, in yet another variation of the composition, the filigree horned deev with groomed beard, golden baubles of jewellery and flaming eyelids, leans back on the unsteady stump of his left arm that gushes blood in complicity with its hand. As his severed foot stomps defiantly out of the cave, the deev accepts the light thrust of the dagger and watches with surprise as the droplets of blood pour onto his chest. A noteworthy difference is the change in season. The left, like the previous illustrations, is painted in the autumn, whereas on the right, the artist has chosen the more customary green landscape in which to place the motley cast of some very odd demons. In the next video, we shall continue in the company of Rostam and the White Deev and discuss the visual complexities and contradictions of the Seventh Han.